Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Blender Developer Sneak Peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I'd like to present you today the cool new features that were there since my last sneak peek. That was a while back, I think. And that is because I'm very busy finishing my German Blender book that I'm writing at the moment. And um, therefore I apologize for not uh, updating you that often but it will be better in two months then it is finished and then we'll be online full speeds so today we have a look at so many cool new features but two were excluded that is the google sum of codes paint uh, uh, painting editions by anthony anthony and i hope that i pronounce it right now ria kiotakis and um, the Sunbeams notes by Lucas Turner that were introduced in Trunk recently. But I'd like to have a full episode for these features because they are really big. And so I'll cover them next time. Let's first look at the Extend Edge feature. To um, make visible why we need this feature, I'd like to um, retopo retopologize this uh, stair that is lying here as an image. And I would do that normally via importing a plane, uh, adding a plane, um, then doing it like this, maybe in the wireframe mode subdividing it several times yeah like this then subdividing it again several times maybe this would be the easiest thing and then delete everything that we don't need like all those edges and vertices here so maybe it would be like that. But you can see there are still some um, things that are not all right. And so I have to tweak it and so on and so on. And you have those um, edges here that you in architectural design don't want. So what you would do after that, you would dissolve those um, edges. So yeah, so you got only one part. And that is all fine and dandy, but there is a new tool for us that helps us with this. And that is the Extend Edge tool. And it's really easy to use. Just add a new uh, plane and delete all vertices except one. And place this vertex just at the start of our stairs, just here. So then do an extrudes until the end of our stairs and then the new tools kicks in. Just do an alt D and a new vertex is generated along those lines. Oh, sorry, along those lines. And when you now alt D again and alt D again and alt D again and so on, then you can very easily make this contour, um, damn it, make this contour working for you, like you see here. And everything else is a matter of extruding and joining those two, and you got a complete face, like this. And so that's very easy and very convenient for architectural work. And I think that you will use it many times. And when, I, when I'm speaking of architectural work, then you would use this too for doors and such things. And I'd like to show you this too. For doors and holes and stuff, we would just assume that we got some plane here or some um, area that we'd like to create a door in. And then we would switch to the edit mode and select those two bottom vertices. And then we would hit Alt D. 
And by hitting Alt D, a new, uh, two new vertices are being created. And when we now scale those and hit Alt D again, like this, then we are creating a hole, as easy as it is. And maybe you have uh, noticed uh, why we are why we were, do were doing those stairs that the cursor position is important for the, this Alt D tool. So when you are doing an Alt D here, then it something is create uh, a vertex is created here, and when we are doing an Alt D here then you see that the vertex is created here. So keep that in mind when you are using Alt-D, but use it, it's really helpful for so many things. The next thing I'd like to show you is the weight, um, the showing of weights in the edit mode. And you all know this uh, mode already, I think, when you, are, um, when you have weight painted your mesh like this. Let Let's just use the weight gradient here, like this. And you're going to the edit mode and have activated show weights. Then this mesh is displayed like this. But as soon as you uh, change the mode to the wireframe mode, you would have this uh, display. But with recent additions to Blender, you can enable show weights here too and the uh, wireframe is showing you the weight like this. So that is very helpful if you are working in the wireframe mode and like to see your weights. The next thing Blender introduced in recent versions concerns open e EXRs. And open EXRs are uh, normally saved as always when you render them via um, F3 and then you can save it. But we got a new option here, cache result. And this cache result is doing the following. Whenever you, um, you can set that in the user preferences, like here, render cache. And whenever you, we, you are rendering an image with open EXR selected, then it will save a file automatically with a unique hash and uh, cache therefore the result so that's very easy and very helpful if you are forgetting to save your work the next minor but nevertheless very cool addition is the tooltip improvement when you look at the tooltips in the new uh, blender like this one or this one then you see that we got much nicer um, nice align tooltips. The uh, Python um, file, uh, Python lines are a bit more grayed out. And when you compare that to the last one that you can see here, then it's much easier for the eyes. So I think that was a great addition and it will help new users definitely. Another thing that you won't uh, notice immediately, but it's very cool, is that you can now set the cursor, the 3D cursor, not only by clicking, but also by dragging. So as you can see here, it's updating those values and setting it as you like. The next thing I'd like to show you is in the compositor. And for that, I'd like to render a simple scene of a bathroom now and um, then switch to the compositor. So let's just wait until it finishes and then switch to the compositor like this. And in this compositor, we got now the possibility. Oh, they are both at the, both at the same sides. That is not useful. So let's switch it to this side. And then um, here we got a view a border. And when we activate that, then we see I always already had uh, set some border and I can set it via control and B. Then we can set a border and control alt, uh, alt B is clearing the border again. So let's set this border and change those values and you will see immediately what a border does or 
the contents inside the border are getting uh, refreshed and everything outside is left as it was before. So this will help on 4K renderers, for example, where you have a, a portion of your image where you can test your settings and then you clear your border like this, control alt B, and then everything is um, applied to your image. And even the Blender internal renderer gets an improvement and that is the start res resolution when you are in the rendered viewport shading mode. Um, in cycles, as you may know, it's like this. When you are rotating your view, like you can see here, then it's first um, rendered in a start resolution and increasingly getting better. And in Blender Internal, it was always the other way around. It was always rendering in um, the high resolution, but you would have to wait until you see your changes when you are rotating, for example. And now this is uh, very similar to cycles. You can uh, define your start resolution here when you increase that, for example, to 128, then you'll see that it's much better already. And when you got an even faster PC that can handle 256, uh, f f 56, damn it, <laughs> uh, then you would see even better what you're doing in your scene. So that is very cool for all those uh, of you that are using Blender internal. And was an addition by Sage, I think. So thanks for that. And speaking of render engines, Cycles got naturally some new options too. And this is the um, volume option per object. Uh, normally, or previously, previously, we always had a volume option in this world setting under volume and settings. All those settings were uh, in effect per, per um, scene. But now we got for every object in the scene, the same settings like distance, equiangular or multiple importance sampling, for example, or homogeneous. And so you can very finely um, uh, set which object has to be sampled more and which has to be sampled less. And that will improve your render times even more. So this was it already for a short overview over the new developments in Blender. Happy planning and we'll see us next time. Just follow, off, follow us on Twitter, Google Plus and YouTube and Vimeo and everywhere you can find us. We see you until next time. Bye.